NASA is poised to welcome new leadership, with Jared Isaacman widely expected to take the role. As a billionaire entrepreneur, seasoned CEO, and experienced astronaut, his arrival would come at a critical moment, with the U.S. now in direct competition with China to return humans to the moon. If selected, the key question is how Isaacman will steer the nation's push to stay ahead in this renewed lunar race, and how his leadership will influence SpaceX, the company central to landing American crews on the lunar surface. We'll explore these possibilities in today's episode of Great SpaceX. We are now nearly one year into the current presidential term, yet the official position of NASA administrator remains unfilled. Earlier this year, President Donald Trump nominated Jared Isaacman for the role, but the nomination was unexpectedly withdrawn. As a result, NASA has continued its work under acting administrators, who have guided the agency through an important transitional period. Recently, however, Isaacman has returned to the spotlight with a renewed nomination from from President Trump. On the social platform Truth Social, the president wrote, Sean Duffy has done an incredible job as interim administrator of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. This evening, I am pleased to nominate Jared Isaacman, an accomplished business leader, philanthropist, pilot, and astronaut, as administrator of NASA. Jared's passion for space, astronaut experience, and dedication to pushing the boundaries of exploration, unlocking the mysteries of the universe, and advancing the new space economy make him ideally suited to to lead NASA into a bold new era. Isaacman replied on X with a message of gratitude. Thank you, Mr. President, for this opportunity. It'll be an honor to serve my country under your leadership. I am also very grateful to Secretary Duffy, who skillfully oversees NASA alongside his many other responsibilities. The support from the space-loving community has been overwhelming. I am not sure how I earned the trust of so many, but I will do everything I can to live up to those expectations. His reemergence is not surprising, because he has earned strong backing from influential individuals and major organizations. SpaceX, led by Musk, has voiced support along with former NASA astronauts and several key members of Congress. Their endorsements highlight both Isaacman's technical experience and his reputation as a determined advocate for the future of American spaceflight. Even so, becoming the official administrator will require overcoming several formal steps. One of the most important hurdles is the hearing before the U.S. Senate Committee on Commerce, Science, and Transportation. This review will take place at 10 in the morning Eastern on December 3rd and will be Isaacman's second such hearing, following the one held on the 9th of April during his initial nomination. The process will be demanding, but his background, leadership record, and the urgency for establishing stable leadership at NASA will give him a strong chance of securing the position. The question now is how Jared Isaacman might shape the upcoming race to the moon and Mars, especially with SpaceX at the center of nearly every major milestone the U.S. hopes to achieve. Whoever steps into the role of NASA administrator will inherit the responsibility of helping the nation stay ahead of China in this new era of exploration. If Isaacman becomes administrator, he will likely bring significant changes aimed at strengthening America's position and accelerating progress across multiple programs. One of his first priorities would be the lunar campaign. The Artemis program has experienced delays, shifting timelines, and growing pressure as China continues to advance its own lunar plans. Isaacman would be expected to hold firmly to the 2027 target for Artemis 3. This mission will attempt the first crewed lunar landing since Apollo 17, and every company involved will need to increase its pace to meet the deadline. Recent updates suggest that SpaceX plans to fly the uncrewed Starship human landing system in 2027, while the crewed mission may slip to 2028. Isaacman would almost certainly urge SpaceX to reduce that gap. If conditions allow, he might even push for both the uncrewed and crewed missions to launch in 2027. There are several strategies that could accomplish this acceleration. One possibility, which has been discussed before, is the idea of using Falcon rockets and Dragon spacecraft to support Starship. In this scenario, the astronauts would launch on Dragon, conduct a transfer in Earth orbit, and then board Starship HLS for the journey to the moon. After completing the landing and return to lunar orbit, Starship would bring the crew back to Earth orbit for another transfer back to Dragon, which would then carry them to 
splashdown. This approach would shift the most complex crew operations into Earth orbit, where conditions are more predictable and where Falcon and Dragon already have a long proven track record. Because Isaacman has flown on Dragon himself and has overseen missions that relied on the Falcon system, he understands the reliability and readiness of these vehicles better than most leaders entering NASA. You may notice that this approach focuses almost entirely on SpaceX rather than Blue Origin. The reason is that Isaacman may move to halt the competing lander proposal that Acting Administrator Sean Duffy introduced. While competition can motivate companies to work faster, introducing a second lander at this stage has created uncertainty. Changing the primary contractor after NASA has already invested significant funding could end up disrupting the program more than helping it. Given Isaacman's background, he may prefer to avoid unnecessary shifts that could waste time and money during such a critical period. Beyond encouraging faster progress, Isaacman could help SpaceX by improving the environment in which it operates. For years, launch licensing has been a major bottleneck, especially for larger vehicles like Starship. Early test flights were slowed by lengthy environmental reviews and layers of regulatory delays. Although the process has improved, SpaceX still faces challenges when expanding Starship operations to new locations, such as Florida. Competitors may push back due to concerns about noise, frequency, safety zones, or airspace disruptions. In these cases, NASA's voice carries enormous influence, and Isaacman could use his position to streamline and support licensing for commercial companies without compromising safety. However, there remains an uncomfortable question. What happens if Isaacman is under pressure? Pressure to ensure a U.S. landing before China, but SpaceX cannot meet the required pace. Some officials, including Duffy, have raised this concern. If progress stalls, Isaacman may have to consider shifting emphasis temporarily from SpaceX to Blue Origin to secure a landing while leaving SpaceX to continue developing the more advanced systems needed for sustained lunar missions, such as long-term habitats and reusable cargo transports. This would be a difficult decision, but it would reflect the broader strategic goal of ensuring that the U.S. reaches key milestones ahead of China. Which option should he choose? Push SpaceX to accelerate Starship or turn toward Blue Origin? In my honest opinion, the first option is more likely and more effective. Isaacman has repeatedly expressed support for SpaceX's approach, especially the importance of orbital refueling. He stated, what I think is incorrect in my humble view is poking holes at the complexity of orbital refueling. Both Blue Origin's Mark II lander and SpaceX's landers depend on it. Private industry is investing heavily in the capability, and when it works, it'll change the game in applications well beyond the moon. If we only wanted another Apollo-style lander, that would surely have simplified things, but, but are we trying to repeat 1969 or pioneer the technologies that will expand America's ability to explore, discover, and defend the high ground of space. He has also been openly critical of NASA's traditional systems. He pointed out the enormous cost of the SLS and the ongoing issues with Orion and the lunar suits. He said, I do agree we should be asking why taxpayers have spent over $100 billion trying to return to the moon over the last few decades and still face such a complicated journey ahead. SLS is extraordinarily expensive. Orion has issues. The suits are not ready. The landers are not ready. And there's a real chance China could get there before our grand return. These statements show his alignment with rapid commercial style development and his support for systems like Starship that aim to fundamentally reduce the cost of exploration. Isaacman's influence would not end with the moon. Mars will be another major focus during his tenure. Two major goals stand out. Bringing home the samples that NASA has already collected and laying the groundwork to send humans to Mars, possibly late in this decade or early in the next. NASA's current sample return plan and has struggled with complexity, budget overruns, and long timelines. China, by contrast, aims to return Mars samples as early as 2031. To beat that schedule, NASA will likely need to rely heavily on Starship. The vehicle has a clear advantage because it is designed from the ground up for Mars operations. It uses methane and liquid oxygen, which can be generated on the Martian surface, and it has the capacity to carry far more material than traditional capsules. If Starship demonstrates reliability in the next few years, it could enable NASA to retrieve samples faster and more efficiently than any other 
Kuiper system. As for crewed Mars missions, SpaceX has already stated goals for the late 2020s or early 2030s. If China returns samples no earlier than 2031, the U.S. could potentially send astronauts to Mars before China even completes its first return mission. While timelines for such an ambitious undertaking are uncertain, the possibility itself carries enormous strategic weight. Isaacman would likely champion efforts that help accelerate the development of technologies required for long-duration human missions. Earth orbit will also remain an important arena. SpaceX has become essential to NASA's daily operations. The ISS relies almost entirely on SpaceX for resupply because Starliner and Cygnus have struggled with reliability and schedule issues. Dragon will also be responsible for deorbiting the ISS at the end of its life. Looking ahead, as commercial space stations begin to emerge, Dragon will remain the primary crew vehicle for early missions. This gives Isaacman even more reason to foster strong cooperation with SpaceX. At the same time, he is also a CEO who understands the need for a healthy and competitive commercial aerospace sector. His leadership could help create an environment where multiple companies can innovate, contribute, and grow. The benefits would not belong to SpaceX alone. Every company capable of supporting national goals, whether through launch services, robotics, science payloads, or station construction, would likely find opportunities in a NASA that emphasizes efficiency and performance. Overall, an Isaacman-led NASA would focus on urgency, innovation, commercial partnership, and strategic advantage. Whether on the moon or Mars or in Earth orbit, his decisions would shape America's path in the most competitive era of space exploration since the Apollo program. NASA itself would experience significant change under Jared Isaacman's leadership. Unlike many of his predecessors, he would likely steer the agency toward a younger, more agile, and more energetic identity. For years, NASA has faced criticism for slow progress, outdated processes, and layers of bureaucracy. Isaacman, who brings both entrepreneurial experience and real astronaut flight time, could work to clear away these long-standing obstacles. His background suggests that he would place strong emphasis on efficiency, accountability, and a renewed sense of purpose, all while inspiring a new generation of engineers and explorers. However, the role will come with difficult challenges. One of the greatest will be managing NASA's priorities within a reduced budget environment. Budget cuts can lead to downsizing, delayed programs, or the cancellation of missions that have already received significant investment. Each choice will carry consequences, and the decision Isaacman must make will draw intense public and political scrutiny. Balancing technological ambition with financial reality will be a defining test of his leadership. Even so, a new era may soon begin for the world's leading space agency. Isaacman appears to be a strong and capable candidate who could deliver meaningful improvements to both NASA and its partnerships with companies like SpaceX. The responsibilities ahead of him are enormous because each decision he makes will influence America's standing in the global space race. All that remains to see is whether he secures the role and how he will rise to the challenge that awaits. In any case, folks, this has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching, and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.